I wonder... I wonder if King Charles, King Charles, I wonder if he ever misses singing the national anthem. Mm. Do -do 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 -do. Welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. This is Q&A number three or four, I can't remember. <laughs> this is Q&A Friday. This is Q&A Friday. <laughs> Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Hello everyone, hi, hello, hmm. So, as I, as I, uh, talk to you, instantly, in comes Finney. Yep, any second now. Any second now, and see his little face. Here he comes. Yeah. Guaranteed every time. Yeah, every time. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. I'll tell you what I'll do. Hold on two seconds. I'm going to get him a bone. Do you want a bone? Do you want a bone? Get your bones. I think you will have done. Yes, you do. Do you want it? You don't want it, do you? You don't want it. You do want it? No, you don't want it. You don't want it. Do you want it? No, you don't want it. Oh, oh you do want it? No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, oh, oh you do. There you go. Oh. I should keep him happy for a little while. Yeah. So he's now at my feet. Chewing on his bone. It isn't a euphemism. It actually is a bone. Well, it's not rawhide or something. I don't know. Rawhide. <sighs> Deep breath. So. Um, yeah. Q&A. Friday. This is. Is it a third? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to. I'm probably not going to give it a name. I'm just going to give it Q&A Friday. I don't know if I'll give it because. I don't remember. I don't just just get on with it. No, I'm not just generally. I don't remember. Q&A Friday. Let's have a look. I'm thinking of what happened. Uh, let's have a look. If I go into the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast. Here we go. Here we go. Just swapping over. This is the one on SoundCloud. Although, got some news for you. Not as exciting, don't worry. Right, go on to 2,000 plays on the Let Me Boy to Sleep today. That's nice. So, uh, um, 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 Molly, Molly, Molly. Oh, that was yesterday. I did a, I did a recording. Okay, cool. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I did Q&A Friday f number three last Friday. And Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. Blimey. 
it's I can't find it right Q&A part two so Q&A part two that was that was the um, blur, 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 the 11th of April and Q&A Friday so what I'm probably going to do is just change the titles a little bit so Q&A Friday 1 part 1 part 2 just because that way this can be Q&A part 3 really not that it really matters that much but it's just Q&A Friday 3 Q&A so technically it was the third one the third recording but it wasn't really the third Q&A because the other one was in two parts although I did record them separately because there was so many questions so many so so many but there isn't quite as many questions this week so I shouldn't need to do more than one recording so the time is 7.38 p.m. Friday the 26th of April 2023 and I'm just going to close down some of the tabs on my computer so okay good stuff that I don't need on just to reduce the outlay outlay so it gives you a bit of a, before I start the questions um, just give you a little bit of an update as some of you may be aware because I keep mentioning it the my podcast I had problems with my podcasts in October and um, where they said no more music not allowed and then said I had to take off the all the music recordings any any ones with music even though they weren't just music it was background music free to use copyright free but um, they said no not allowed uh, so I started deleting them and even I didn't delete quick enough because they actually deleted I think two of my podcasts the let me boy to sleep being one just deleted the whole thing which was um yeah not not great but there you go so i have st I, I i opened up soundcloud i went back to soundcloud cause that's what i used to use years ago and I did the Let Me Boy to Sleep on SoundCloud and the Sleep Insomnia one on SoundCloud as well. And also the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis one. And I've had problems with that one uh, sinking for some reason. Uh, anyway, so... I've had all my other podcasts on Spreaker. Even though Spreaker did that, it's you know like I like Spreaker. There was they're a good service. It's just the uh, just one of those things. The I guess the people that pay them, the like Spotify, a place like that, we weren't. I wasn't fulfilling, or I don't know, abiding by their guidelines or whatever. So because I've got so many different podcasts I didn't want to lose all of my podcasts I didn't you know I didn't want to lose for those people that enjoyed or that used the for example the stop smoking podcast or the chronic pain relief podcast so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen I've got fourteen different podcasts 
I had more than that, but I got rid of some of those because it was just old recordings, which the quality was just pretty awful. So I just thought, well, let's just wave goodbye to those. So um, I've been looking, been looking, 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 looking for, because these are all connected They're online, connected to Apple Podcasts, but none of them are they're all just like without music which means i get hardly any plays you know i had 67 plays today between all 14 it's that's that's (laughs) kind of sad really sad so um i found another podcast host called where is it I've been looking around for ages, just kind of weighing up whether or not it's worth doing it. But this one's called Zencast, Z-E-N-C-A-S-T. And they have unlimited podcasts. So it is, unfortunately, a cost. Nothing's free. Um, And because of what I need, I, I... in order for me to actually have the podcast back in their proper state with the various different recordings, you know, uh, background music, which means I'll be hopefully getting back to giving the audience what they used to get before. So I am my profile, your profile, team members, bit in. Right, I'm on the, what plan am I on? Blimey. Uh, what do they, oh, what do they call it? Choose, change plan, update, update, uh, choose plan. So I'm on the plus plan, monthly, which is $99 a month. And what it gives me is the ability to add all of my recordings with music on there I'm not going to do the let me boy to sleep one yet I'm not going to do the deep sleep whisper hypnosis one and I'm going to so I'm going to keep the three SoundCloud ones because I'm not going to put all my baskets in one hat if you know what I mean so I want to but if I can get some of the smaller podcasts actually getting some plays again that'd be nice um, it, it might not work it might work but you know as soon as the music went the the interest went <laughs> which is not with all podcasts but with all the ones that are on Spreaker I mean it, it's yeah I mean it's, it's amazing really it, it does surprise me because even on here I've got Deep Sleep Whisper yeah Okay, I don't really get that's now changed, so that's not that's not valid. But um, when it's on, when when it's when the one without music is available on Apple Music podcasts, rather, I get you no know, three four hundred plays a day on the Deep Sleep Whisper. That's the one, but there's no music ones on there. Um, so that's, but I've transferred that anyway to SoundCloud. But things that surprised me is Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. And there's 207 or 206 recordings. And I get like 20 a day, 20 plays. And that, that used to be one of my more successful podcasts. Anyway, so I, I, I realise I've not been quick on this, and I've talked for an hour already. But that was it. That's what I've done. So I've got Zencast. I spent all day today um, uploading and producing the ASMR Whisper Let Me Boy to Sleep. Ooh, bit of gas. Lovely. Mm. Uh, I've even got a new image for the podcast I've created new images for each podcast episode 
because I lost a lot of that stuff in the past. Uh, there's only 10 recordings, but they've all been uploaded and all the different versions of them. So there's 39 episodes all in all. There was one missing, it's just, it's just gone. So I do, it just that's, doesn't matter really. So, and I've got descriptions of them as well. So it's taken quite a few hours to put that together. And tomorrow I'll work on another one. I don't know which one I'll do next. Um, maybe the chronic pain relief one. So, yeah. And I'll just do that over the next... It's going to take me probably about a month, maybe longer to get... All, probably longer, actually, because some of the big ones, especially, yeah... It's going to take a while, but once it's done, it's done, and I'll see how it goes, and if after, you know, if it goes well, what I might do is look at transferring the Let Me Boy to Sleep to there. The only issue I had is because it allowed me to actually transfer via RSS feed but it only allows five well only but 500 recordings on the podcast um, that will show to the public which is not I mean it's for most people it'd be quite okay you know for those that make one recording a week 500 is quite substantial isn't it what's that like 10 years worth of recordings nearly but 500 doesn't cover much for me because of the different versions I do and the different kind of stuff I do so I'm going to I might keep the big the big podcasts like Let Me Boy to Sleep or the Insomnia one and the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis ASMR thing. I might keep them separate and keep them on on uh, on SoundCloud. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Right. Should I put a thing at the beginning and just skip to, skip to like 72 minutes in when the actual podcast actually really starts? So in the background, I've got Vinny at my feet, happily munching on a on his bone. I've got a TV on, on mute, and otherwise you'd hear it, wouldn't you, I guess? And it's on YouTube playing a boxing channel called Box Nation. And I'm not really watching it, which is a lie, because I am watching it right now. And, but it's it's not distracting me. Ooh, ooh, get out of court, get out of the corner. Blimey. They can't be the same weight. Well, sure, they're not the same weight. Like, one's a heavy, they're both heavyweights, yeah? One's huge. It's about four inches taller and it, wow he's absolutely massive now I think the other bloke's really big as well he just because the referee is I don't know mind you he's so deceiving because the other bloke doesn't look like a heavyweight But then I would be a heavyweight if I was a boxer. So it's a hard one, isn't it? It's like it's some of the heavyweights today are just absolutely huge. Okay. You may wonder why I'm mentioning that. It's because I will be talking about boxing. Yes. <laughs> yes, I will. Because, because, because of the wonderful things he does. Analytics. So far, oh, eleven and the ASMR whisper. I've had eleven plays. Wow. 
So yeah, it's not not the biggest amount. So okay, I'm going to go to my my Facebook page now. Let's have a look. By the way, if you haven't joined my Facebook group, it's called Jason Newland's Boring Group. Uh, currently got 159 members, did have 160. I'm not sure what happened to the one that left. Or, I, I don't know. But, uh, there you go. So, I've got some questions. If, if perchance I miss out a question, please forgive me. Um, there isn't many questions to answer, so, which is, so I should be fine. <clears throat> um, I do have a question from last week that I'm going to try and find. Oh, by the way, thank you to everyone that posted pictures of your of your puppies and your kittens onto the page. Uh, so let's have a look. And welcome to Martha Rose, who's a new member. Which means we basically lost two members because we it's now 159. We had 160, and we've got a new member, Martha. Not sure if uh, you related to uh, Molly, 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 ah, Molly, 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 ah. Um, okay, right, I had a, a message left over from last week, it was a bit of a, a, bit of a strange question actually, to be honest, thinking about it, I might, I don't even know if I answered, five days ago, Okay. Right, I've had a few questions on that one as well. So if I'm just going to... What I'll do is just all of them. So this is from last week, but it's from a few days ago. Uh, did I ex okay, this is from Christine. Right. Uh I think I answered Cindy's Hindi. Uh, what's been your favourite holiday? What superpower do you wish you had? What's the question you wish more people asked you? Do you want to? Would you like a? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, def, I think I answered those anyway. So, Christine. I mean, this is this is a little bit of a not the happiest start to to the to the questions. Death row. Ain't gonna happen, mill. Okay, so it's a very condensed, very condensed question. Um, basically, if I, <laughs> what would what what would be my last meal, if I had to choose a last meal? Um, well, I mean, it ain't gonna happen because we don't have we don't have that in this country. So, the. Uh, I think even even in America, they although they do have it, it's, it's still quite rare, isn't it? You have to wait years. Terrible service. Um, last meal. I gonna say. Uh, I get a pizza, sweet corn and pineapple pizza. Probably some ice cream. 
The thing is, I mean, realistically, I know, you know, I should just answer the question and move on, but how are you going to enjoy a meal? I mean, it's, I, I, I don't like to be rushed, <laughs> I'm just saying. And there's kind of a time limit, isn't there? And I don't necessarily want to eat a big meal when I need to get up in the morning. Or if I have to go to bed, you know, soon. So, it could be a little bit inconvenient. I don't know. I'm not a big fan. I don't know. Um, sweet corn, pineapple, pizza. Maybe, maybe some KFC stuff. Uh, popcorn, chicken, maybe a couple of, uh, you know, chicken um, legs, perhaps uh, some McDonald's, just a mixture of bits and bobs, you know, just like everything, really. And uh, I guess, you know, based on if I was in that position, meant that I'd done something pretty bad. Uh, if I was rightly accused, that is. Um, I guess a can of Red Bull as well, because, uh, as we all know, Red Bull gives you wings. And it's the only way I'm going to get wings, isn't it, really? If I've been a naughty one. Death row, um, yeah, that's it, yeah, I think... Um, Bomber Brown. It's a heavyweight. It was weird. Bomber Brown. That sounds like a real throwback name, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Uh, Christian, uh, sorry I got this too late. We'll answer the, uh, to answer the podcast on Friday. That's me. No problems. Oh, was that it? I thought there was more, more, more people had asked questions. That's what I saw. I saw more, but I was wrong. I was wrong. Yeah, there was another one. That's weird. So, um, oh, no. I answered these last week. Right, I'll move on. I'll move on. So, the first... Blimey, I just had some breakfast cereal. I want gas, which isn't a great thing to do on a podcast. I've done worse, but you know. <laughs> okay, it's that time again. Q&A Friday, please post, please post your questions. I will try and answer. So here's the first lot of questions. I did mention them yesterday, but Christine says, what do you do to relax? I have a walk. No, I, I, some of the things I like to do to relax is I quite like walking in the countryside. I do like it when it's a bit breezy and got the breeze in my face and I quite like although I don't do it anymore but when I used to live near a beach I used to like to walk on the beach I walk for hours just walking on the beach and I like to look out at the sea and sometimes it's the when I was a kid well a kid when I was a young a young younger man teenager or whatever I remember looking out in the sea and realizing that it was the only time I could I ever got to look straight and not have something and not see something apart from the sea um providing there was no ships or anything you know in going past so I couldn't see France or Belgium which is across the sea from here. And so it was, it was quite nice to be able to just have that continuous 
a visual experience of not having anything there so I found that quite meditative although I didn't know what meditative meant, meant this is then but um, I still don't because it's not a real word is it meditative but it, it felt quite relaxing it did uh, other things I do on a day to day basis is I like to listen to classical music uh, sometimes I'll, st I'll sit in my chair it reclines and I'll sit there and uh, it won't always be classical music sometimes I listen to an audio book sometimes I listen to an album like a music album uh, such as I don't know Michael Jackson or Tracy Chapman or Terence Trent D'Arby or Madonna or whatever album from the 80s <laughs> I'm stuck in the 80s man I want to move out but I'm stuck there oh that was loud that was a bit like a car fart hmm so yeah um, whatever it might be I, I like listening to to there's this I don't know what it's called it's a YouTube channel and they read I think they're out of copyright books and but they're all the books they read generally are motivational self help uh, those kinds of books and yeah I quite like listening to them because It's educational, but also I've been into that stuff for such a long time. And it kind of reminds me of some stuff that perhaps I've not forgotten, but just not been thinking about. And sometimes, it, you know, it's new information to add. Or perhaps I'll, I'll hear the same thing. Because what I, what I notice is sometimes I can hear the same thing a hundred times and on the hundredth time, it still doesn't go in. <laughs> no, it's in, like I don't know. I might I might read the same thing a few times, and then like oh, 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 and you know that kind of moment, an oh moment. Um, that's kind of it at the moment I mean in the past yeah I admit I used to drink I used to drink that I thought that was relaxing but it, it really wasn't um, but I don't drink alcohol ever anymore uh, so yeah I, I, that's about it really just listening to music sometimes I like to just especially if it's like really windy outside or it's particularly rainy and it's splashing against the window I like to just sit there and listen now I don't get really this, the pleasure of listening that I used to since I've had Vinny because he's prone to bark at any second so it's um, I've noticed that my my level of relaxation has gone down since I've had him at times because if he, if he doesn't have a continuous uh, sensory experience auditorily he he seems to he's very you know very easily not distracted I guess probably not just stimulated not upset probably it's stimulated so someone opens the door downstairs or he just starts barking and it's not good for me if I'm in bed because it is just too much of a shock to my system and that is the the one thing that I really struggle with with him really but there you go
but he tends to relax. I, do, I tell you what, I do like relaxing. I like it when I'm sitting on a chair with my feet up and he's cuddling next to me, which he's doing more and more often now. He didn't do it. You know, he, he tried to do it when he first moved in here. So I'm guessing he perhaps he used to do that with his mum. And he, he went to cuddle me and it just didn't feel right to him. He looked up at me and like, Ew, and just, just jumped off. And I've seen him look like he's tried to get close to me over the time. Because I've had him for I've had him quite a while now. And well, he's lived here quite a while now. I don't really feel like I'm his owner, if anything. Yeah, it's the other way around. Uh, so I... I like that because he cuddles up to me, and he he's been he sits on the the part where my feet go, and lays on that. He's been doing that since we got here, since he got here. But he's gradually moving further and further closer to me, so he's now like where my legs are, sort of not my bottom legs, but the top thigh bit. So he's cuddling cuddling up to me. And he's going to sleep, and my my hands on him, and I'm kind of maybe stroking him or whatever. And he's he's cool because there was a time, even when he had his legs, he was down near where my legs were, where my legs were, <laughs> the bottoms of my legs, you know, the the knee bit. I put my hands on him, and he'd jump off. I wouldn't even be able to touch touch the the back his back without him jumping off. This, I don't know why, but hey, he's he's kind of got used to me after a while, I suppose. Look at his box, and there's two blokes behind the referee, uh, the the announcer, and they look like twins, like they're in the audience. So, and there's one. I wonder if it's the same person. Oh God! Isn't it weird? You want to go? I want to go back. Never ever have I wanted to, to, to see those people before. And now I've seen them. I want to see them again and I can't because they won't. Oh, come on, please. Oh, damn you. So, I wish I had a, I wish I had a question about boxing. Because that would just be really perfect. Because I've got boxing being played just for me. So that's it, really. Relaxing. I'd like to read more and I find there's a there's a lot of distractions <sighs> just just part of it is because there's always something to do there's always something to do you know with the podcast with the just whether it's making images whether it's editing processing it's just it's it's a never ending thing and as well as that there's all these streaming channels like Netflix with more programs than I will ever ever be able to watch in my lifetime or in many lifetimes I just couldn't it's just not enough time and that's annoying because there was something about live television where I so I suppose uh, the, for the first uh, for the first ten years of my life there was three channels that was it three terrestrial channels there was no internet back then. There was no satellite television in this country. There was no cable. There was none of that stuff. It was just three terrestrial channels. BBC One, BBC Two, IT3. ITV. ITV, yeah. Um, and then about 1980, 81, maybe 82, I don't know, Channel 4 came in. 
so there's four channels and then in 1997 channel 5 came in five channels and then in the early 2000s things started to change in fact no the late 90s well the uh, before that um sky had all these different channels and changed the way things were and then uh, we had this thing Freeview came out with all these different channels on and so we suddenly we had ITV instead of just ITV we had ITV1 ITV2 ITV3 and there was channel 4 uh, I don't know four gold or something I think there was once um, babe station I don't know, there's lots, lots of uh, <laughs> different channels there used to be a, a th- oh what was it called what was it called it was live TV. It was a whole channel, live TV. And I used to work there as a security guard. Well, I didn't work for live TV, but I, I was a security guard in the Canary Wharf, 1996. And the... I was... Yeah... Our insurance, our insurance, our, my security company was employed or hired out by the Mirror, the Mirror Newspaper Group. And at the time, Kelvin McKenzie was in charge of the Mirror. He had a booming voice. Booming voice. See him on telly now. Uh, So yeah, so that was... Uh, that was there then, and uh, they had. I don't know how many how many floors they had, because if I remember, there was the mirror. There was a Sunday mirror. I think they had the People, which was a Sunday newspaper. The Racing Post as well, I think, was by the same group, and then they had live TV which was a a television channel so it, and that was on uh, Freeview or it was on Sky or whatever I don't know can't remember yes it was on Sky so I I, I wasn't necessarily on any, on any particular floor but I managed to wiggle my way onto the live TV channel, the TV channel floor, because I liked it up there. And I got to know the staff, and that helped, actually. If you get to know who's coming and going, then you know who's who. It just makes it a lot easier when it comes to securing a place, if you, if you, if you know who's who, you know? So let's say Kelvin McKenzie came in and I'd open the door for him. I wouldn't stop him and ask him to see his ID or check his bag because it was he was the boss. And the same way as, you know, because at that time, the reason behind having security or extra security there was because a bomb had just gone off. About two weeks earlier, uh, well, a week earlier, two weeks earlier. I don't know how long it took them to get me there. And basically, what happened is I applied for a job as secu- as a security guard for this company. I, I forget the name of the insu- of the I keep saying insurance. I forget the the name of the security company. But they said no. I had the interview. Spoke to them on the phone the next day. They said, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Now nah, you're not suitable. I said, really? 
They said, yeah, yeah, no, no, thanks. Uh, didn't like my attitude. I'm partly making it up, but it's probably true. Anyway, uh, the bomb went off. I remember I was in Stratford. This isn't very relaxing. He's talking about bombs. No, it's just, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to, just, just, this is what led to it. Um, I'm not going to lead, I'm not going to talk about what led to the bomb. Just So, Canary Wharf was bombed. It, a bomb went off and it was in the afternoon or early, yeah, late afternoon, whatever, early evening. It was in the summer and or springtime. Shook the house. I've never felt anything like it. And I was living in Stratford, which isn't that far from the Docklands, which is where the, which is kind of more, is it Mile End kind of area? Uh, so I honestly, we, it, the whole house shook. Well, in fact, the whole street, the whole of East London shook, I imagine. And people were just coming out of their houses like, what the hell just happened? And I don't. I, not everybody came out of the out of, of their house because not everyone was in their house. But it was very, very unsettling, I would say. And maybe we go outside and said to the neighbour, "Did you feel that?" And she said, uh, yeah, why do you think I'm standing in the street? I didn't come out because I wanted to talk to you, did I? <laughs> With that like, ongoing uh, relationship. See, she she lived next door. And when she saw me in the street, she jumped behind a car that was parked. And... Uh, I said, she jumped in front of a car. Yeah, but she she jumped in... She, basically jump and hide from me and I started doing the same it's like you know it's, it's a joke and she did unfortunately you know it was like and we just did that for a couple of years actually and she passed away and I remember speaking to her son and I said um, you know about a funeral he said well you're not invited I said, what? He said, you're not invited. I said, what would you mean? I said, we've gone great. We were, we were good friends. He said, no, no, you weren't. Did she, she was always hiding from me. She couldn't, she didn't want to speak to you. She just, you, you were so boring. I said, no, she was joking. And she, he said, and also you started jumping in, out, you know, behind cars and stuff, which is weird behaviour. I said, well, she was doing it. And he said, yeah, but that was because you were so boring and she didn't realise you'd seen her. She wouldn't have done it if she'd thought you'd seen her. But you you waved, waved, shouted hello, and then jumped behind a car. I mean, that's, that's weird behaviour. So she wasn't my best friend? No. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, but there, so, so basically... The security job was like, nope, go away. Two days later, <laughs> literally, um, the bomb went off. The day after the bomb, a phone call. Hello, can I speak to Mr. Newland, please? Hello, are you still interested in doing security work? We're not fussy anymore. We need lots of staff really quickly. Uh, and this was on a, th I think a Wednesday or a Thursday. Yeah, you can start Monday. Or it might have even been Saturday. It's like they needed me to start zero training. Like nothing. No kind of... Um, they kept saying, "I was I did the job for a, quite a while, 
I say a little while. I was there for into 2007 as well, no, 1997. So they said to me, "Oh, we we'll do some um, some kind of self defence training and everything because." After all, you are in quite a uh, a vulnerable position sometimes. You're on your own in the middle of nowhere and you're secure in a, a place. And I said, OK, nothing ever happened. I'll well, we'll get you some first aid uh, training because, you know, you're, <laughs> you're, it's not just you on your own. Like, I'd be looking after... Or not looking after, but I'll be securing a building full of young people. Well, not all young, but mostly young uh, trainee nurses. So you'd think that give me some first aid uh, training in case someone needed help, because um, they were all going out drinking and you know having fun, and they would come back sometimes a bit worse for wear or maybe falling over and stuff. But the uh, my supervisor, security supervisor, pointed out the trainee nurses, they don't need medical care from you. They live in a hospital. They literally live connected to a hospital. That's where the nurse's home is. I was like, yeah, but what if they need help there and then, like, they're trainee nurses. The other trainee nurses that aren't in, having, having problems can help the ones that are. I said, can I not even have a have a bandage or like a little kit or something? Just a little first aid kit with some scissors and some plasters and maybe paracetamol. I, I don't know. Something. He said, no. What if, I, what if I bite myself? You can bite yourself. Yeah, you can do that if you bite yourself. Really? Yeah. Are you going to buy one, are you? No. Well, what was the point in this conversation then? Well, I, don't know, I don't know. I'm just trying to flesh out the podcast. <laughs> Oh, you do one of those Q and A Fridays again, are you? Yeah. Um. So I, I, I don't know what the point of that telling you about the security job was. I can't remember. How did I get there? From how do you relax? And I ended up talking about security. Okay. Next question from Matthew. Is there any recordings, video of your stand-up comedy? Ah. Mm. Mm. Um, and this, that question's from both Matthew and Ken. Um, well, 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 well. There's no video. Although, you know, just talking about live TV... So I was there in 1996 until the, the threat went down and we all got basically moved on to different places. So I was there for about three months. Three months? Yeah, I was there. If that, I might have only two months, maybe six weeks. It, it seems like quite a lot because... I didn't have a day off. I was there every single day for uh, probably about six weeks. So it seemed like... And I, I was doing 12-hour shifts, sometimes 24-hour shifts. Um, I say sometimes. It happened once and I got sacked because I fell asleep. Even though... Even though... I'd just done a 12-hour shift... Well, I'd done an 11 and a half hour shift. Had half an hour left and the supervisor came and spoke to me. And this is one of the directors of the company. 
So it wasn't, you know, it's like he should be in the know. He said, look, I really need your help. I said, look, you can go to you can go to the toilet by yourself. You don't need me. He said, no, not, not this time. You, can you stay on and do an extra shift? And I, I, I wasn't really thinking straight. I thought he meant like just until the next guard comes. Because that's what would happen is the rule was you'd be on a 12 hour shift if the place is being secured 24 hours a day which a lot of places were especially at the weekends you know some places would be closed during the weekends and there'd be 24 hour security so you couldn't leave until your replacement had come in so if you was doing 6 in the morning till 6 in the evening you had to stay there until the other I don't know why I'm, I'm just I don't have to explain it lots of different times so I just you know it's until the replacement's there and if the replacement doesn't come you have to wait there until they find someone else to replace the replacement and if they don't come at all you either stay on and do another shift which means they have to replace you for the next day or sometimes the uh the i don't know what what do they call it, it was um the supervisor the mobile guard basically is uh they had mobile guards that would travel around in their cars and check on the different sites to make sure pretty much that no one's fallen asleep. That's pretty much all their job was. And to make sure everything's okay. And if there was a problem, they'd be able to, they'd go there. If someone didn't turn up, sometimes their job would, for the day would or for the night would just be that. Staying there for the rest of the night to cover that shift. Which is good for the rest of the people because then we could all go to sleep. No, we weren't going to be uh, interrupted. Although there was this one bloke who used to come and see me. Yeah, two different places I worked at. He'd come and see me. And he took a shine to me. Like, he was a nice bloke. And he was known for being really tough. And he had a reputation for you know, getting people sacked and for fight, catching people asleep and stuff like that. But for some reason he liked me and he wanted to sit and talk to me. And I <laughs> I wanted to go back to sleep because I had ways of knowing when people would come in and, you know, there's alarms and stuff went off. So I was always there. I was always like fresh... Fresh as, fresh as a daisy whenever he actually entered the building but then sometimes he'd have to ring because I, I was on a patrol he'd have to ring the, the, the doorbell in order for me to answer the door because he wouldn't have keys to get into the building although he probably did but they were probably in his car you know he'd have to go back and get them and he would he would ultimately be able to get in if he had to. But he, he didn't carry around a big, massive... I mean, it'd be, like, a lot of different keys. Anyway. He said to me once, he said, how come you're always on patrol whenever I call? Whenever I come round and ring the doorbell, you always have to come and let me in. You're never at the reception, which is where my main job was, at the reception. And it was a printer's, and the other place was a uh, nurse's home. And he said, you're always on patrol. What he didn't realise is, as you went through, just through the, the, the doors of the reception, where the lifts were, that's where I used to go to sleep. So I'd, it was just a nice place to lay down. I used to, I can't remember what I used to, what did I used to get? 
something to lay down on. I can't remember if there was something, but there was quite a few different. Wow, I'm just remembering some of the sites I was on. I should talk about my security job one day. Tell you about the different things that happened. Um. Wow. Anyway, um. Are there any recordings of my stand-up comedy? How did I end up talking about security jobs? Oh yeah. Live, live um, TV. They had a contest. It was like a talent show. And even though I, I got really well with this young lad. I say young and I was young as well but he was an apprentice and he was excited because I told my because at the time I was actually actively doing comedy although I had to take a break when I was doing security because I was just working all the time and he was sort of saying oh wow and he 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 found a tape of me when I performed at live TV in the studio in 1995. So I actually performed on their talent show the previous year to when I was working actually at the studio. Well, working, you know, not in the studio, but working as security there. And... It was, he was so excited, it's like, and it wasn't a bad gig either, it was, there was only a very handful of people, and some of them did laugh, but I don't know where that is, and it'd be really weird, really weird to find that, I mean, it might be on YouTube, I might have to check that out, very strange, because I was... Wow, 1995, I was, at the time, yeah, I just turned 25, just turned 25, so, and I was still 25 when I was doing a security there as well, so I was, I put on a bit of weight, so I was a little bit heavier than I had been, because I was always slim. <clears throat> just started taking anti antidepressants actually and uh, I put some weight on quite quickly uh, so and I was in a new relationship romantic relationship which was among the best I've ever had actually to be honest relationship days and uh, really really liked her a lot but hey and so yeah I I'm not sure if he actually was able to make a copy for me I can't remember I really don't remember I think I might have had a tape of it somewhere and just lost it along the way so recordings I've got probably a few hours worth of me maybe more of me um, doing gigs. I used to use a little Dicta phone thing, you know, recorder. In 1991 when I started, I was recording right from the beginning. I might not have been just thinking about it. It might. Not, it, I think I copied someone else that was recording. I think it's Nick Royalty. He used to record, so I think I copied him. Yeah, so, but at least, like, a few weeks into doing it, I started using a, a dick, a dick, a dick to phone, dick to phone, I think that was called, it's like tiny, little things, and little tapes, and I then transferred them onto bigger tapes, later on in the, in, 
whatever. So yeah, I've got I've still got the little tapes and the big tapes. And I do have the I think I still have the the ability to transfer the audio tape onto digital I think but I'm gonna have to look into that now I think the real question <laughs> I'm guessing the real question is do I have anything worth listening to probably not I mean it is pos it's potentially interesting in a sense of um I don't know, it kind of like looking at uh, digging up an egg that's like thousands of years old, like it's just it's a duck's egg. And it's it's not doesn't mean anything, but you know, it's like, oh it's a duck's egg. You know, just interesting from that perspective. It's not not gonna find out anything about the world, but a duck laid the egg you, you know I mean, I'm, I'm perhaps not doing myself a, a service here but I don't know it's not really I'll have to listen there might be some it might there might be something fairly decent on there there might be if I do if I find anything that's okay I might upload it. The problem is, uh, some of my comedy was a little bit rude. It was all rude. Yeah, it was all rude to start with anyway. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. So I got a message from, so that was from Ken as well, as well as, um, yeah, uh, Sky writes, I know you're a boxing fan, but do you watch any other combat sports, MMA for instance? I know you used to practice karate, so I thought I'd ask, oh thank you for that, um, Generally, no. I do. I like the original MMA more than the UFC. And this is gonna this is gonna contradict what I say later. <laughs> um, it's I, I'm not. I mean, it's the same with boxing. I don't, I don't like hugging. I don't, I really don't like hugging. I don't like wrestling. It's very, very effective. You know, so I'm not, unless there's more than one person, then it's not. Because, you know, you if you've got three opponents or two opponents, you you know, you can't go onto the ground with one of them because you're just going to be... I'm just saying, if if you, <laughs> I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about somebody that's uh, into having punch ups and stuff. That's not me. But they, a person, will put themselves in harm's way if they was to go on the sort of floor with the other person, because then it basically the other per, you know, they they couldn't defend themselves against more than one person if they're on the floor. Unless, of course, they could, and then they would. But I I like the original idea behind MMA, which was simply... You know how it all started? <laughs> I can even turn this into something boring. Wow. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, I don't know if you know the origins of MMA. So, mixed martial arts. So, you might say, well, yeah. Obviously, it's 
martial arts and doing mixed martial arts is they're doing lots of different things. Ah, didn't start out like that. See, now, if you want to be doing mixed martial arts professionally, uh, especially with the UFC, as far as I'm aware, you have to know jiu-jitsu. You have to be proficient in that and like wrestling and you have to have proficiency in the groundwork, which a boxer wouldn't have. Like a, a box, like a, pro, I'm not saying they wouldn't have it, they might have it, but, um, you know, a professional boxer, boxes, they're on their feet, they move around, you know, they evade the, the punches and they punch this, they don't wrestle. I don't know why I'm <laughs> stressing this, but basically, um, that's kind of where things are now. You have to, you have, and because of that, I don't really enjoy watching a lot of the MMA or the UFC um, because sometimes. It's like apart from the very beginning when they're on their feet and they're, you know, trying to win on their feet. Some never try and win on their feet. They always try and take the opponent down. And I don't find it interesting. Now, I would if I was a wrestler or if I was into jiu-jitsu. I would find it fascinating and instructional and, you know, I'd appreciate it more. But because I'm not, I just, to me, it's just a couple of sweaty people, you know, men and women, whatever, basically rolling around on the floor, which isn't always a bad thing. I'm just, you know, just, I didn't, it's just not my thing. So it's, I just, just, bleh, just, just, I find it, because I, I like boxing and I, I like, I've liked martial arts I like to see. I quite like to see people doing the same style, whether it's karate, whether it's kung fu, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's judo, whatever. Two judo people together, I find more interesting than two MMA people doing judo. For some reason, I don't know, just because it's the skill set. I guess it's even. It's an even matched kind of fight. Um, I don't know really what I'm saying, but did you know? how it started here's something you might not know so I've not told any, I've not said anything you don't know but here's something you might not know where did it all come about where did it all start well I don't know if if it started right in where I'm going to say but generally there was a conversation went on in the 70s where people would say and bearing in mind Bruce Lee was a superstar but he did he passed away very early in the 70s um, I think he was 75 or something and who was the other most famous fighting star Muhammad Ali um, of course you had wrestling and that but the thing is Bruce Lee, he made martial arts movies popular, like worldwide, really popular. And he's still the biggest martial arts star of all time. Even though loads of stars have come along and made way more movies than him, potentially probably much better movies than he did. But Bruce Lee's still the king. He's the king of Kung Fu. And there's not one... I don't think there's one martial artist... In the world that doesn't agree. Even the greatest martial artists ever... Will pretty much say that Bruce Lee is their hero. It's a rite of passage... 
write a passage write a passage if you if you get into martial arts bruce lee is the focus now i'm not sure if it's the case now but i'm pretty sure it probably would be even now you're gonna you know young people would be more um I don't know who the martial arts are people are now, but you know when I was, let's say in the nineties, uh, Van Dam or uh, Jet Li or um, a few different people that were on back, is it on back? But were great martial artists, made brilliant films. That might be how how like a little kid would want to get into martial arts but once they got into it they'd discover Bruce Lee and they would realise that Bruce Lee is the king not only would they be told that Bruce Lee is a king but once seeing him realising you know because Bruce Lee wrote books he did training he, he used to train the stars uh, he used to choreograph Choreograph, 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 can't say the word, choreograph, choreograph, it, because <laughs> he was a dancer as well, so, choreograph, choreograph, that's it, he would choreograph the whole thing, as well as, I think he'd write the movies as well, write the scripts, so, he, a lot of people don't might not realise that he was a child actor. Like from a little kid, he was acting all the way up. And he was a dancer and he could do all the acrobatics. And Jackie Chan's a, probably the most famous uh, martial arts movie star in the last 40 years. As, as arguably, although he kind of went more down the line of, I don't know, because you got, I think you've got different types of Jackie Chan uh, fans, the ones that enjoy watching him in his films in the 90s, 2000s, and you know, where he did all his stunts, and you like, and he's such a likable person, and he's made huge amounts of movies. And then you've got fans, the martial art fans, who would watch the movies from the 70s, maybe early 80s. Uh, like, I can actually, I'm going to have to look them up, but there's one, Snake Fist, Jackie Chan. Movies. Um... He had, oh, Drunken Master was one of them. So I'm just going back to which year. Okay, he's still making movies now. 1962, Jackie Chan was making movies as a child. Wow. So, if I move there. Actor, producer, no, 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 no. So I'm just going to move to Fist of Fury. He was in, Jackie Chan was in Fist of Fury, which was a Bruce Lee movie. So he was just a stuntman in that. I think there's a scene in Fist of Fury where... Bruce Lee goes down into like a cellar bit where they've got these people in like little offices and stuff and that's where he does all his nunchucks and stuff like that and I think one of the stuntmen is he chucks a snake into a room and they they jump out the window I think that one of them was him oh wait a minute one of the hands Prison security guards, also stuntman. Okay. Now that was Enter the Dragon. Game of Death, different movie. Game of Death. Blimey. 
So Jackie Chan was in Fist of Fury, Game of Death, and Enter the Dragon. Blimey. I was thinking of Enter the Dragon then. Wow. So they must have known each other. Fist to fist, all in the family. So I'm just going through. Enter the Dragon was 1973. And Bruce Lee passed away before the movie was released. So it's probably, I guess, made in 1972. So I'm going to say, where was his first? Oh, here we go. 1978, Snake in the Eagle Shadow. That is one of his great, very funny movies. Really good. Um, Snake and Crane are Shaolin. I'm not sure about that one. Drunken Master. Brilliant movie. Again, it was... He, it was kind of similar, similar kind of movie, really. <laughs> similar kind of movie, but really good. Drunken Master. And it was like a drunken style of Kung Fu. I'm just having a look. The Young Master, another one that was 1970, no, it's 1980. I remember that one. Really good. He also was a director of that one. Uh, he was in the Cannonball Run. Blame, I remember that. You know who who he was with? Does anyone remember the Cannonball Run? Okay, the Cannonball Run, if you don't know what it is, it was basically um, like a race across America. An illegal race across America. And I think Burt Reynolds was the star. But it had huge amounts of stars in it. Seriously, huge amounts. Huge amounts. I mean, we're talking, blimey, Burt Reynolds, Roger Moore, Farrah Fawcett, Tom Deleuze. I think that was uh, Burt Reynolds' um, partner in it. Dean Martin, Sammy Jamie's. Sammy, Sammy Davis Jr., Adrian Babu, James Farr, Terry Bradshaw, Mel Tillis, Jackie Chan, Michael Hu, who, and uh, Jackie Chan was in a car with Jaws. Was it Richard Kill? Remember Jaws from uh, James Bond? Jaws, big, huge man. So he was, he was with him because there was a bit in it. I remember, oh, I got so excited because this is nineteen eighty one, and I wasn't quite into. I was into martial arts, so I wasn't. I wasn't doing any karate at that time, and I remember seeing it for the first time. And Jackie Chan does all this kung fu, and it's like wow. Really good. Now I'm just thinking Cannonball Run 2 came out. And I just realised that Richard Keel was in that one. So maybe Richard Keel wasn't in the first one. Oh. Huh. This is confusing. Let's admit, Let's have a look. When was Cannonball Run? No, Cannonball Run, he wasn't in the first one. Oh, okay, so in Cannibal Run 2, Richard Kill was with Jackie Chan, but Jackie Chan was in both of them. He played Jaws in only, he played Jaws in two movies, two of the um, James Bond movies, The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker. Oh, sure it was. Wow, isn't it weird? So he put, <laughs> he in 1976 he was in a movie called Gus and he played 
large man. <laughs> Isn't that weird? So he plays the same character twice, 1977, 1979, and it, it etched him in the for those you know around at that time what year was that 1979 yeah I mean literally he was so really famous really the spy loved me wait a minute James Bond, a film producer, spotted Keel and uh, thought it was ideal for the role of Jaws in The Spy Loved Me. And also in Moonraker. Wow. So, yeah. Um, the main thing was the question. Who would win in a fight between Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali. Now, the obvious answer is obvious from both sides. The obvious answer is well, Bruce Bruce Lee, because he was, he could kick people and super fast, and they wouldn't stand a chance. And the other answer is obviously Muhammad Ali, because he could punch super quick and he was a heavyweight world champion you know he was a much much bigger guy however um, it did get tested a bit because Muhammad Ali non-boxing fights because he did that like showboating not showboating but he f he had uh, da, 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 da. where is it right Muhammad Ali right I can't get rid of that Automated. So basically, he was. He fought. I'm going to turn the volume down so I can watch it. Because I've seen this before. Basically, he fought. Ali fought. What? Now it's talking. Ali fought Antonia Inoki. And. He was a martial artist, so they had a had a exhibition fight. Just have a look. Wow! And straight away, he's just showing it. Straight away, the bloke comes lunging at Ali to kick him. And Ali moves out of the way. And he ends up being on the floor. But what does happen. If I'm correct. Is. Ali gets kicked in the legs. A lot of times. And got. Yeah he's, he's being kicked and stuff. And he said he didn't like it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just watching it. It's weird. He's basically got him. And now he's kicking him on. Okay, fair enough. And he also wrestled. I think he, he fought a wrestler and he got... And that didn't go too well. So, I don't know. That was the question. Who would win in between Muhammad Ali and Bruce Lee in a fight? You know, in a controlled sporting event, not a real fight. In a real fight, it would be whoever landed the first punch. Or the first blow. Because. Let's face it. If Ali punched anyone on the chin. In a real fight. They're going to probably. Speed and everything. 
you know, and being a, a big bloke, he's, that's going to be it. However, Bruce Lee always said that he showed off for the camera. It looked good, all the head kicks and stuff and all the somersaults. But in reality, he'd go for the knees, he'd go for the ankle, he'd go for the groin, like kicks-wise. He wouldn't mess around. There'd be no head kicks. It'd be over in seconds. The person would be on the floor, which, you know, makes sense. So I would. Uh, so that's how it started, MMA. Uh, from that idea. And what happened is the... I don't know when it started. In the 90s it was. I think, late 90s different martial artists would come together. So you had sumo wrestlers against boxers, uh, karate people against uh, jiu-jitsu, um, and you dif different styles against each other, you know? And that was fascinating. That was kind of the whole point of it. You know, like a boxer against, you know, a boxer against a wrestler or stuff like that. It was, like, interesting. So, um, and then they started to realize that whoever could go to the floor and be best at the floor generally became the winner. And it was the Gracies, the Jiu Jitsu people, the, the very famous Jiu Jitsu family in Brazil, I think. They actually they dominated and everyone that did MMA started to learn Jiu Jitsu or Judo or some kind of groundwork because you know a boxer would be fine if he was facing someone that was just going to stand toe to toe but if that person got him on the floor and choked and that was it or got them into an arm lock or whatever anyway so that's that was my answer to that question uh, yeah I I no boxing is the only thing I really like now I will watch I mean you know occasionally I'll watch something so for example there are some absolute stars like John Jones or John Bones Jones, who is phenomenal. Uh, so, you know, he's, even if you don't like MMA, you could not like watching him because he is, he is on a, a level, just phenomenal level. He's absolutely amazing. So, um, and there's a few like that, but I'm not so up to date. So, yeah, I would probably watch McGregor, his return fight, just out of interest. Yeah, I'd probably watch that. The events are good. It's it's very well put together. The audiences are really into it. And the even the, um, the announcer, it's Michael Buffer's brother does the UFC announcing and apparently they didn't even know each other until they were in their 40s or something they're like same dad but or same mother but different dads or whatever uh, no I don't know anyway they hadn't met each other for f 40 odd years I'm making part of that up but some of it's true I think and the style, because Michael Buffer, the one, he's the one that says, let's get ready to rumble. And outside of Mayweather and George Foreman, I think he's made the most money out of boxing. Because he copyrighted, trademarked that, that let's get ready to rumble. And he's made hundreds of millions. It's amazing, isn't it? Wow. So his brother, 
I forget his name, it's Buffer, I forget his first name, he actually really gets into it. And when he's introducing the, I don't know, the fighter, he looks at them, the fighter he's introducing, and he like, like he's egging them on to get ready. And it's quite, quite good to watch. So, yeah. Boxing, that's, that's the thing I like. Which brings me probably to the next question. Here we go, here we go. Here's the one. Thank you for that, Sky. Um, but, but, yeah. Oh. Right, I'll end that. I'll do this one first. Now, I'll, I'll do that first and I'll go back to the. How do you reconcile your non violent philosophy with your love of boxing? This is from Jen. Well, 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 well. Um, Sky also said, that's an interesting question. I know how I would answer it, but I'd like to see what he thinks. Sorry, I just had to say this is a good good one. I'd like to hear what you have to say, Sky. <laughs> then I, that will help me out. Um, 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 um. Two comments. Oh, someone else's comment as well. And Rick, Rick says, I agree. Okay. Um... For me, boxing is, it's going to sound silly, and I, I do realise it's not completely true either, um, from other people's perspective, including the boxers, but from my perspective, it's not violent, it's a sport. And you might think, yeah, but they're, look what they're doing. I said, yeah, okay, fair enough. So I do understand that it. So for me, when I used to, because I've done karate, taekwondo, boxing, and Wing Chun Kung Fu and Jeet Kune Do. So. I wasn't allowed to spar in boxing, but we did spar when I was a kid in karate, and I did spar with taekwondo a little bit. Wing Chun Kung Fu sparred a lot. It was very physical. I actually had my rib broke doing that, and we used to have a thing called leg spar every Friday evening, and you had to not only attack uh, as well as defend yourself with your legs. And I suppose the point, what I'm trying to say, I've not said it yet, but what I'm trying, point I'm trying to get to is there's no aggression. For me, there's no aggression. It's just fun. Or well, it was fun. I haven't done it for a long time. I had to stop doing the taekwondo because of my arthritis in my lower back. So, and that was like 10 years ago nearly, I think. But I've got a punch bag here. I've got, two, got a punch bag, punch ball and a punch bag. And even when I'm punching the punch bag, I'm not thinking of it as being a human being. Uh, there's not really any aggression. It's just fun to punch, if that makes sense. I'm not imagining that there's a human being there because I don't want to punch a human being. I've got no, got no reason to do that. I've got no... I'm not saying I've never I've never wanted to, and I think uh, anyone that says they've never wanted to punch someone is potentially lying. I think we've always wanted to, always all all wanted to at least once, you know. But it's not something that I, you know, that's in my mind. And when I was sparring, I remember when I sparred doing karate when I was at school. And I wasn't, I was little. And the, the kids that were the same size as me were a lot younger than me. So the kids the same age as me were bigger. And there was also much older kids and there was some adults as well. 
and apart from one person, I got on with everyone. And when it came to sparring, they wouldn't give me a hard time. They'd, they'd push me around and knock me down and all that stuff, including the, the instructor. But it never hurt me. Never. Because he could have done. And he, he you know, chose not to. Which I'm, I'm very grateful for. Because he was like six foot six. And I was about five, five foot three. And if he had hurt me, I mean, if he'd have hurt me, I probably wouldn't have want to go back. I have to edit this. He started barking. There was this kid. Well, I said he was a kid. He was, I was in, what, third year when I started doing karate. And he was already in the, I think he was in the sixth form. So he was about three years older than me. Yeah. He was like 16 or 17. And he was really, he was, he was really tall. He was probably a good six, 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 seven. Slim, but really tall. And he used to take advantage of his size. He was, he wasn't a black belt yet, but he was a brown belt. So he was not far off getting black. And he he tried to bully me. And for some reason he found that funny. So, and I, I, I couldn't match him skill-wise because he was well, well ahead of me uh, in just in every situation. He was stronger, he was far, everything. He was better than me in every way. Like, as far as that went. And he kept pushing me over, kept kicking me over. And sometimes it even... Because, you know, part of it is you kick people when they're on the floor. But you don't actually kick them. It's it's like a a shot, a scoring shot. You know, like you go down on your, on your foot into their stomach. And it's a scoring shot. You don't actually really kick them. Like when you're sparring, especially not with a kid, when you're like an adult. Well, when I started enough of this, so I, dec- I decided to use some of my own my own style of technique and he didn't want to spar with me after a while because I kept accidentally hitting him in the groin or uh, kicking him in the knee and I just said like I can't help it it's just you're so tall and manly I can't you know basically his groin was almost where my head was like it was that tall. I'm not even like literally it was that tall. And it'd be on the floor like ah like that and it'd be and I'd have to stop myself from laughing because he was he couldn't do anything because he couldn't go off on me like get really like angry because you know he was one of the assistant instructors at this point. Because he was one of the higher grades there, I think he was only there was only I think at that time there was only one black belt. Everyone else, the highest one was brown. Other than that, he did get a black belt, but he was very skillful, anyways. But <laughs> I, I just like I had to do something. So after that, he didn't seem to really want to pair up with me after that. I did it a couple of times and I just put him on the floor because it's very easy to do that with someone because our whole legs and bodies made up of very weak parts it's like the joints the joint the it's the joint of your arm it's like that's why jiu-jitsu does so well because it uses those weak parts and anyway I was quite pleased with that um, at the time, I was very young. I wouldn't do anything like that now. Uh, so, but you know, generally, I enjoyed doing it because it was fun. I enjoyed sparring because it was fun, and I wasn't I had no intention of trying to hurt anyone, and I expected people not to have that intention for me either. So it was a sport. It wasn't about violence. Um, with the Wing Chun. 
I act, someone accident well basically we're practicing elbowing into the into the chest and somebody I got my rib broke by this huge man now he didn't mean to hurt me but he, he didn't need also at the same time he didn't need to do it as hard as he did I mean I never ever never whenever I sparred or practice any movement I never punched my hardest or hit my hardest or kicked my hardest ever it was all about just practicing the movements and practicing the blocking and that I put more effort into the blocking than I would with the punches and the kicks never wanted to hurt anyone because these were my friends these were this was like you know if you go to anything whether it's bowls or uh, a book club or whatever you do it's a social thing isn't it it's 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 not just about reading a book or um it's that you make you make friends and so if you do like a martial arts you don't want to get don't want to be hurting each other I and mean, i suppose it's maybe if young people with boxing maybe they do get into that and get carried away but uh, with the wing <laughs> with the wing chun I did say, like, because I didn't know it was broken at the time. But I knew it was really painful. But it didn't stop me carrying on. And I had to have a rest. And I went back and I had the, the pad on and everything. And I was opposite someone. We were doing a game. But it was, I said, look. You just need to be careful. Just go gentle with me. My rib is really sore. Go gentle. And he did it and it hurt me. He did like he did it too hard. I said, look. Seriously, please, just go gentle. And he, he didn't take me seriously. I said, if you don't if you don't go gentle, the well just, you know. And he didn't listen, so I put him down. I didn't eject him. I'm saying, I, I did the same to him, but because I was always gentle, I always did it. So I thought, okay, you do it to me, I'll do it to you. And he was on the floor, like with his rib. And so I didn't, I feel good about that, but I'm just saying, he, I asked twice, like, just be gentle, man. You know, when I had it done the first time, it was an accident. I was with a different person a second time. Like just be, just go slowly. I sh in reality, I should have just gone home because it was broken, and I needed to have six weeks recuperation. So I couldn't do anything for nearly two months, actually. But when I got hurt, it kind of kicked, something kicked in. So that like friendly kind of sparring went out the window, and. The thing is, if you teach people how to cause harm, how to cause, you know, it's it's there if you need it. And it's, I said, I don't feel good about it, but that's what I did. So um, I accidentally went too hard. And then, <laughs> see me talking about being a, a, a non-violent. I'm a very non-violent. There's a reason for that as well, which I never talk about. So, because then this recording would become very serious and I don't want it to do that. Uh, I, when I was doing Taekwondo, the, so in boxing, no sparring. We did, we practiced like pad work and, you know, but that was it. There was no sparring. So there was no, I'd have loved to spar. It would have been brilliant, but I never got a chance. I did do kickboxing briefly when I was a kid, before I did karate. And that was like full padded, all geared up and just beating each other up. But with so much, so much gear on us, it was just like, um, what was those big things, you know, where they like big, like, it's almost like having a, I don't know. One of those bouncy ball castle things just wrapped around you. Couldn't have got hurt if we tried. It was just impossible. 
so the taekwondo there's this this bloke he was i think not that it makes any difference he was, he was german but i say it makes no difference i just remember and i didn't there was a little bit of a communication issue and he was trying to show me how to hold a fist like i'm sorry anyone over the age of 12 knows how to hold a fist it's you know it's it's not it's not complicated you gotta put your thumb there like try, i mean trying to tell me how and he was saying oh you know you have to f have your f and he was trying to say i need to have your thumb in a certain way like no what, what are you talking about he was trying to tell me he was so excited right i i shouldn't really be moaning about him he went to a contest taekwondo contest yeah competition he came back and it was a carter or form. It's basically, it's where you just do a bunch of moves. It's a practice in the moves, the blocking, punching, kicking. There's no one there, but it's almost like a, a pretend opponent. And as you go up the grades, the, the, the form or the carter or the katar becomes more sophisticated and complicated and it's... It's quite beautiful to watch, especially the the higher ones. It's very like a dance, really. And um, so he went to this competition. He was a higher grade than me, and he came back and he was all excited because he'd won first place in uh, the contest for the Carter for his grade. And we were all like, "Yeah, well done. You know, good good on you." Turns out it was the only entry. He was the only... <laughs> he was the only person of his grade, which is probably green belt or blue belt. He was the only one that actually applied in his grade of his age group or whatever. His weight, I don't know, whatever. Not weight, but no one else. So he, he wasn't... I don't know why I'm explaining this. It's self-explanatory, isn't it? But he was so proud that he came first. But there was no competition. There was no one else. You literally could have just gone into the middle and just sat and done a big poo. And you still would have come first. You know? Well, maybe not. He probably would have got kicked out. But I'm just... You know what I mean? Just generally. It always has to come down to pooing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. True. Well, anyway, he, he used to do this thing, right? Okay. Now, again, with sparring, we used to sometimes just practice blocking. So it wouldn't be sparring necessarily, just blocking. So someone punch. But it wouldn't be fast. It'd just be a nice speed. And even if it's a fast punch, you haven't got to block hard. Because you know what they're going to do. You know what I mean? It's like... We're practicing blocking a front punch or a back fist. I don't know, whatever they were called. So you knew what was coming. So you didn't need to do it hard. You did it fast, but you didn't need to do it hard. He was doing it hard, which um, is what is why learn in Wing Chun is you don't block. You hurt the, the opponent's arm. So you end up, so if someone goes to throw a punch, you you block it, but you damage their arm in the process. And if someone goes to kick you, you damage their leg in the process of blocking it. Well, Taekwondo wasn't really like that. It wasn't, unless, unless it was, and they never told me anyway, never told me to do that. So I was just practicing, and he was banging my arm out of the way. Like, really bruising my arm or hurting it. Like, only temporarily, but it was like, ow. What are you doing that for? I said, stop it. He said, no, I'm supposed to do this. We are supposed to do this. Because that's a, is that a German accent. You've got to do this, sir. And if you're... <laughs> I'm shutting up. I'm stopping. And... So I did the same to him. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. He liked doing it to me, but he didn't like me doing it to him. 
So I blocked him. He's like, ah, well. It's like, we can all do that, you know. It's not complicated. We can all go like that hard and, you know, especially when you know what the person's about to do anyway. It's not complicated. We are just practicing the movements, my friend. We're not supposed to be hurting each other. So, a couple of times I got a little bit, just a little bit aggressive a couple of times during the years of doing things. But it's very, very rare. But it was supposed to be for fun. You know, these are my friends. I don't want to, I don't want to get hurt by them or hurt them. I don't want to get hurt by them more than anything. But, uh, yeah, the first thing that I remember, I've spoken about this. My neighbour across the road, he was, he worked in the, he was in the American army. So he, he worked on the base, the American base near where I, where I lived. And my next door neighbour was, I think he was two years younger than me, but he was bigger than me or just a bit bigger but he was like a tough kid at school like toughest in his year or whatever but I was it was like but I was he was my neighbour so I always got on with him and everything and he knocked on my door he said do you want to do you want to have a fight <laughs> I said no thanks <laughs> I'm reading the dandy and the beano today I'm going to be pick, picking flowers in the garden he said no do you want to I said no uh Horace, or whatever his name was, John Wayne across the road. Uh, he does kickboxing, and he wants us. He wants to see if you will join in because I need someone to spar with. And I said, oh, "Okay." I had to ask permission. So my dad. He said, uh, "I don't know." He phoned up. He didn't fight yet. No, he went because the bloke was outside his house. So he went out. My dad came outside and he said, um, I'm not sure if you should do this or not. Uh, I need to ask some questions first. So he said um, to the neighbour opposite, the, the man, he, he said, uh, so you want you want to teach, train uh Bert next door and Jason, my Jason, to do kickboxing. And the bloke said, yeah. He said, um, okay, is is there a chance that Jason could get hurt? He said, yeah. He said, well, go ahead then. So I take him. <laughs> so, yeah, brilliant. And the annoying thing about it is this bloke, the neighbour across the road, so we, me and... Bert next door, I forget his name. We were both two years younger than me. I mean, he's now 51, blimey. We were both padded up. We've got all this stuff on. I'd never done kickboxing before. I'd never done any anything like that before. And I don't think he had either. But the bloke who was training us so we did all the stretches, all the warm-ups, all that. And then he said, come on, just beat each other up, basically. And he was on the other kid's side, like egging him on. Come on, Bert, you can do him. But, like, I stopped. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why, why are you egging him on? Surely this should be a partisan decision, or I if that's the right word. Why was he... He can't take sides. And that annoyed me. In fact, it annoyed me so much, I didn't want to go back. Now, I would have gone back, because I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it. Oh, I really felt the stretches the day after, though. I'd never stretched before. And doing the whole split thing. Well, not splits, but like the proper thigh stretches. Oh, it was, that was a shock to the system. And a couple of weeks later.